Hello. Good morning to everyone. Uh, we will start our Sunday school. May I request everyone to please stand as we begin our class in a word of prayer. I welcome also those who are joining us online via Facebook. And of course, again, good morning to everyone who has joined us here on site. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege of worshiping you. And we praise you, Lord, for your faithfulness and the mercy and the grace that you have shown to us, especially during this week, Lord, that we have been sustained and we were able to come together as your church to worship you. We ask, Lord, that you forgive our sins. And we ask, Lord, that as we study your word, we ask that you open our hearts to the truths that you would like us to learn and apply in our lives. If there are any sins that we need to confess, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you show us those sins if there is anything that we need to do, Lord, we ask, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would guide us as we study your word this morning. All these things I pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So you may be seated. Today, we live in a world that is full of counterfeits. Punong-puno po ng mga peke or mga bagay na hindi authentic sa ating mundo ngayon. So kung pupunta kayo sa bilihan ng mga damit, if you're going to shop for clothes, you would find a lot of clothes that are imitate, imitation, what we call as imitation. Uh, sila yung mga brand na hindi naman talaga legitimate na brand dahil may ginagaya sila na authentic na brand. That is why we call them as counterfeit or fake. Nung medyo nagkaroon ng alarm ang mga tao, Dahil marami nagkakasakit. So nagkaroon ng malaking demand sa mga gamot. Ano nangyari? Naglabasan yung mga peking gamot. Diba? Yung sinasabi nila na we have to be warned with these uh, fake medicines. So hindi lang pala mga damit ang nafe-fake ngayon, kundi pati mga gamot din. And there are many things around us that we can consider as counterfeit. How do you know that a certain product is a fake or counterfeit? In order for you to determine that, you have to know what an authentic product is. Kailangan nyo malaman kung ano yung totoo para makita nyo kung ano yung mali. The title of our lesson for this morning is Christianity Against a Culture of Counterfeits. Christianity Against a Culture of Counterfeits. Kindly turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19 po ang ating pag-aaralan as we continue our Book of Acts series. This is our lesson 34. Lesson 34 po. So, as a review, we have to remember that by this time, the, Apol, the, the Apostle Paul had been preaching Christ. Particularly, last time, we discussed that the Apostle Paul preached Christ in a place called Corinth. Sa Corinto. Nagpunta si Apostle Paul at kung makikita nyo sa inyong screen ay yung mapa ng kanyang missionary journey. Theologians divide the missionary journeys of Paul into three and we are studying his third missionary journey right here. So he has been traveling around that area called Asia Minor and last time we talked about the Apostle Paul preaching in a place called Corinth. And in that place, the Apostle Paul preached to the Jewish people and when the Jewish people have been, shall we say, immersed already with the gospel and many of them are not believing, the Apostle Paul proceeded to the Greeks. And many people in Corinth believed. Last time, we also remember that we have talked about some individuals named Aquila and Priscilla who were husband and wife and they were a uh, good help to the Apostle Paul in the ministry, particularly in teaching one person who is very eloquent but he needs to learn and his name is Apollos. So Paul continued to preach Christ in that area. He continued to proclaim Christ as well as strengthen believers. That is, or those are his goals whenever he's traveling around the area. So by this time, the Apostle Paul, for our lesson, he arrived in a place called Ephesus. Paul arrived in Ephesus where last time we talked about him encountering a group of disciples who were eventually baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So disciples have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the Lord and the Savior. 
Now, for our lesson today, we are going to take a closer look at this place called Ephesus. Last time, we have been discussing so many places, Thessalonica, Athens, uh, Corinth. Now, we're going to focus on that place called Ephesus. Ephesus was one of the most important trading centers in that area. So, masasabi natin na para siyang, siguro kung ikukumpara natin sa situation natin, para siyang Makati or para siyang ano ba yung mga business areas dito sa Pilipinas. So, Ephesus was one of the most important trading centers and that is why a lot of people go to that place. Pag, pagdating sa kalakaran, talagang marami sa mga kalakaran na kanilang binibenta ay dumadaan dito sa Epeso because it has a very strategic location. Now, like the city of Corinth, this place called Ephesus, as we have studied, have very idolatrous people. In other words, the Ephesians, yung mga nakatira sa Ephesus, they were also worshipping the false gods who are being worshipped in the other places that have been influenced by the Greek culture and the Roman government. So, they worship particularly, kung makikita nyo sa isang screen, they worship a goddess called Diana. Diana of Ephesus or Diana of the Ephesians. Kung makikita nyo yung actual statue niya, hindi ko nilagay dun sa screen kasi baka, ano, uh, baka may mga ma-offend. Pero that's the, the picture of Diana. She is the goddess of fertility. She is the goddess of fertility. And uh, you might know her as, in her Greek equivalent name as Artemis. Siya si Artemis whom the, the Greeks worship as the goddess of not only fertility, but also for hunting, for nature. This is the, one of the main goddesses, if not the main goddesses, who are being worshipped there in Ephesus. And it is for this reason that the livelihood of the Ephesians are revolving around the worship of this goddess, si Diana. So umiikot ang kanilang buhay, ang kanilang kalakaran, ang kanilang pag-iisip sa pagsamba dito sa goddess na to. And this is the place, and this is the kind of people whom the Apostle Paul is going to minister to. Our first heading for our lesson, Against Practitions of Counterfeit Power. Against Practitions of Counterfeit Power. Turn to Acts chapter 19, verse 11, we are going to read. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits that possessed the people went out of them. So as we have studied, Paul had been proclaiming Christ, and in this particular place, God has allowed the Apostle Paul to show miracles through his hands. God authorized miracle healing through the hands of the Apostle Paul, particularly to authenticate the message of the Apostle Paul about Jesus Christ. So the Apostle Paul, as well as the other apostles, had been authorized by none other else than God that in the name of Jesus Christ, they would be able to heal people and they would be able to show miracles and cast out devils in the name of Jesus Christ. So we have to understand, mga kapatid, that this is not normative for every believer. We are not given the power to, uh, to show the miracles that the Apostle Paul and the Apostles are showing here, even though we are saved. This is very particular for this time wherein Christianity is slowly spreading from the Jews to the Gentiles. So in this area and in this particular place in history, God has authorized the Apostle Paul as well as the other apostles to show the miracles. And if you're going to look at verse 12, diba? they were bringing in uh, sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. So a lot of people have been healed. A lot of people had demons that had been cast out of them through the hands of the Apostle Paul because God has authorized it. Verse 13, Merong mga tao na napansin ito. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one Skeva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. 
So again, may mga tao, ang tawag nila sa kanilang sarili ay exorcist and it is very likely that they are making money out of this. They are making money out of what we call as the dark arts. Iba yung mga kapangyarihan na nang, hindi nanggagaling sa Diyos kundi nagmumula sa kasamaan. They were Jewish exorcists who cast out evil spirits in the name of Jesus. So they probably caught on the success of the Apostle Paul when it comes to healing and casting out demons. And so these family, mukha silang pamilya, sons of Sceva ang tawag sa kanila, they also cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ. But we have to understand that they failed to realize that the name Jesus Christ cannot be used as a magic spell. Kasi ganito yung parang ginagawa nila na pag sinabi nila yung pangalan ni Jesus Christ, even though they are not of Christ and they were not authorized by Christ, yung mga devils magtatakbuhan. So they are using the name of Jesus Christ in a wrong way. They were also not believers and they were not part of the church. Hindi sinabi sa scripture na ang mga sons of Sceva na ito na Jewish, ang kanilang uh, ang, ang Jewish sila, they were never with they never believed. Ang sinabi dito sa scripture, they just used the name of Jesus Christ to cast out demons being exorcists. So how did the evil spirits respond to them? What do you think? Verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are ye? Sino ka? Who you? Verse 16, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Sabi ng evil spirit, si Jesus kilala ko, si Paul kilala ko, Sino ka? When they tried to cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ and apparently using the name of Jesus Christ as a sort of a magic spell, ito ang sinagot ng evil spirit sa kanila. Hindi sila kinilala. We have to understand that during the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, while Jesus Christ was here on earth, when the evil spirit saw Jesus Christ, God in flesh, they trembled. Yan yung makikita natin sa Gospels. They recognized the authority of Jesus Christ and they were afraid of Jesus Christ. Ayaw nilang maparosahan. Takot silang maparosahan ni Jesus Christ. They recognized the authority of Jesus Christ. And we also have read from this that the evil spirits also knew who Paul was. Kilala nila si Apostle Paul. And we will not be surprised because the Apostle Paul had been casting out demons successfully in the name of Jesus Christ. Pero itong mga sons of Skeba na ginamit lang ang pangalan ni Heso Kristo ay hindi kinilala ng mga masasamang espiritu. What happened to these sons of Skeba? The sons of Skeba, according to the verse 15 and 16, they were overpowered and they fled from the house naked and wounded. It is apparent here that the evil spirits tormented the sons of Skeba. Nagbackfire sa kanila. Imbis na paalisin nila ang mga masasamang espirito, sinaktan sila and they fled of the house naked and wounded. So they were humiliated. And this is a result of using the name of Jesus Christ in a very wrong way. And we have to understand, brothers and sisters in Christ, that spiritual warfare is not a joke. We do not mess when it comes to evil spirits. We do not take evil spirits lightly. At kaya naman, meron tayong verse dyan sa Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6 when it comes to spiritual warfare, which would be a very excellent discussion. But the point is, we do not deal with evil spirits lightly. Kaya yung mga natutuwa sa atin na manood ng mga horror at mga ginagawang katatawanan at minamaliit yung pagiging sinasaniba ng mga masasamang espiritu. We have to understand that that is not a joke because many people around the world, even right now as we speak, are being tormented with evil spirits. And it is only in the name of Jesus Christ that these evil spirits would go out. Now, the sons of Skeba used the name of Jesus Christ wrongly and that is why their plan backfired on them. Now, what happened next? Verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear 
fell on them all in the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Whenever evil is being uh, overcame, whenever people are converted, the name of Jesus Christ is always magnified. Because it is only through the name of Jesus Christ that evil spirits will be cast out. And that in this case, yung mga may sakit ay napapagaling through the hands of the Apostle Paul. Because he has been authorized by God to heal the people. Verse 18, And many that believe came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So we can see here that many people acknowledged the message of Jesus Christ. They believed. And not only did they believe, but they showed their faith. They showed their belief through their actions. How do we know that many of these people, if not all, are converted? They turned from their, what's the term? Curious arts. They brought all together their books that are being used for such gimmicks. For messing around with evil spirits, they brought together their books and they burned them. Ano nangyari? They counted the price of them and it was total 50,000 pieces of silver. So marami mga tao ang naligtas, marami mga tao ang naniwala dahil ang pangalan ng Diyos ay naitaas. At they, were, they repented from those things that they were doing before that had something to do particularly with the kind of practice that the sons of Skeba were practicing. And we have to understand, brothers and sisters, that true conversion brings about change. Kapag tayo ay naliligtas, kapag ang isang tao ay nililigtas ng Diyos, ay hindi niya hinahayaan na yung taong yun ay hindi magbabago. And this is what we can see here. There are many people here who brought together the evidences of their evilness and burned them. And because many people have been turning from their idolatry, imagine a lot of people agreeing together, wala pang social media noon, wala pang phones, but they agreed together and they came together in order to turn from these things. Because many turned from their idolatry, the trade that had something to do with idolatry was threatened. So kung matatandaan natin, the Ephesians were worshipping Diana, Artemis, and yung kanilang pamumuha, yung kanilang kalakaran, your way of living, had something to do with the worship of Diana. And now that many people are turning from the dark, the dark hearts, the curious arts, diba? and many people, and we can expect that they would also turn from idol worship, the business of Diana, the business of idolatry was threatened. So we go to our second heading, which is against worshippers of a counterfeit deity against worshippers of a counterfeit deity. Verse 21, bisahin natin, After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the Spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a reason. And the same time, there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. When he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. And her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. So as the Apostle Paul continued to do the work of God, and the specifics have been mentioned in the early verses that we have read, 
in Ephesus, there was a man named Demetrius. He was a silversmith. And his business, how did he earn money? How did he get his wealth? He made shrines for the goddess Diana. And there were many people like this man named Demetrius who made a living out of the idolatrous hearts of people. Pinagkakakitaan nila ang puso ng mga tao na sumasamba dito sa Dios diyosa na si Diana at si Artemis. And business was good back then. Even until now, binibenta pa rin ang mga rebulto. Binibenta pa rin ang mga bagay na may kinalaman sa pagsamba sa mga rebulto. And we have to understand that back then and even until now, talagang prosperous. Talagang kikita kapag ikaw ay nagbibenta ng mga Dios Josan. Now back then, Demetrius gathered the businessman and pointed out, tila ba sinasabi niya na, itong si Apostle Paul ay lumilibot. Hindi lang dito sa Ephesus, kundi sa iba't ibang parte ng Asia Minor, kung saan ang mga tao ay naniniwala sa kanya. Ang mga tao ay sumasamba sa kanyang tinuturo. He is teaching the way. He is teaching Jesus Christ. And many people are turning to this way. Many people are turning to Christ as their saving Lord. And nakita ni Demetrius yung pagbabago ng mga tao na sumasamba kay Heso Kristo. Nakikita nila na mga tao nung panahon na yon na ang mga totoong kristyano ay nagkakaroon ng pagbabago sa kanilang paniniwala at sa kanilang mga kilos. So much that Demetrius gathered all his fellow businessmen and sinabi niya, natitreten ang ating business, ang ating kayamanan dahil sa Apostle Paul na to. And even makikita nyo yung great temple ni Diana, which is considered by the way as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Sinasabi niya na, mahahayaan nyo lang ba na masayang lahat ng mga ito? Dahil mas mahalaga kay Demetrius ang kumita ng pera kaysa sa malaman at tanggapin ang katotohanan tungkol kay Kristo. Demetrius realized that if more people would believe Christ, then he would have less customers. How did the people respond? Verse 28, And when they heard these sayings, They were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. How did the people respond to the claims of Demetrius that their business is threatened by Christianity? The people were full of wrath. The people were full of anger and rage dahil dito sa nangyayari at kinakabahan marahil ang marami sa kanila na mawawala na ang kanilang kayamanan, mawawala na ang kanilang pinagkakitaan dahil marami mga tao ang naniniwala kay Heso Kristo. So much na nangyari itong gulo, na nangyari itong confusion na marami mga tao nagtipon-tipon at sumisigaw sila, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! At marami sa mga taong yun ay nasale doon sa crowd and di nila alam kung ano nangyayari basta nagsisigawan lang sila, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And even the lives of these people that have been mentioned here were endangered. So much that the Apostle Paul was prevented to enter the theater. Let's look next what happened. Some therefore cried one thing and some another. Iba-iba yung kanilang sinisigaw. For the assembly was confused. And the more part, knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude. We do not know who exactly Alexander was. Basta kinuha lang nila si Alexander mula sa crowd. And they put him forward to speak. So as to speak. The Jews putting him forward and Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew... Kung matatandaan natin, mababa ang tingin ng karamihan sa mga taong to sa mga Hudyo. All with one voice, about the space of two hours, cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! 
So makikita natin that the people were so confused. The people were all gathered together and they were crying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians for two hours. Ganun lang ang kanilang sinisigaw. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. You consider that worship? You consider that true worship? Di natin alam kung anong ginagawa nila, bakit nila ginagawa yon. But there was apparent and there was sure confusion. Verse 35, And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana? And the image which fell down from Jupiter, and of the image, seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. Kung itatagalog siguro natin to, yung essence na sinasabi niya ay, mga kababayan, maghunos dili kayo, manahimik kayo, at huwag kayong gagawa ng mga bagay na hindi nag-iisip. Verse 37, For ye have brought either these men which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open and there are deputies. Let them implead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, this day's riot, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. So anong nangyayari? For two hours, nagsisigawan yung mga tao. Ando sila sa theater. At tila ba itong mga kinuha nila mga tao na gusto nilang idiin ay nasa in danger na maari sila masaktan. And they were crying out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And some people do not even know why they were there. Basta nagkakagulo lang sila. And so the town clerk of that place appeased them. Because what will happen kapag natuloy itong gulong ito? What will happen to them? The Roman law officials would question them and if there is chaos, there is riot that they were not able to contain, they will be punished. Maari sila maparusahan. Dahil gumagawa sila ng gulo, nagsisigawan sila at chaos ang ginagawa nila dun sa city. And by this time, for this time, the disciples have been spared. They were able to have their own lives. So, we see here, the focal idea that we would like to present is that we must acknowledge that counterfeits, ang mga peking mga bagay, cannot thwart Christ and His church. Counterfeits cannot thwart Christ and His church. For our first application for this morning, we only have two applications. Number one, when it comes to spiritual warfare, Never rely on counterfeit authority, but rather on Christ alone. Never rely on counterfeit authority, but rather on Christ alone. We are Christians. We members of ba Baptist Bible Church are Christians, and we only follow one Lord, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is only Jesus Christ who has the authority and power against evil. Again, during the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, he was recognized by the demons. And you can check that in the Gospels, particularly in Mark 5, 1 to 14. When Jesus Christ encountered the man who was possessed by devils, by Lee John, the devils recognized his authority. And the Apostle Paul, in the name of Jesus Christ, was able to cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ. So it is only Jesus Christ and through his name that the devils will flee. The following things has no ultimate authority over demons. There are many things that people rely on these days when it comes to casting out devils, when it comes to dealing with evil spirits. Number one, man-made charms. Man-made charms. May mga materyales na ginagawa ang mga tao at doon sila umaasa sa kapangyarihan, laban sa kasamaan, laban sa mga masasamang espiritu. Marami mga examples ito at karamihan sa mga ito ay nabibenta. And even in this online age right now, makikita niyo sila sa Shopee, sa Lazada. Ang mga bagay na maaari magbigay sa inyo ng kapangyarihan laban sa kasamaan with shipping fee. May mga crucifix. 
There's nothing wrong with the cross. The, the cross allows us to remember the suffering of Jesus Christ on the, uh, for our sins. There's nothing wrong with the cross as a symbol. But if you're going to use the cross as a substitute for Jesus Christ, that's wrong. We do not use the authority of the crucifix against evil spirits. We do not rely on amulets and even handkerchiefs that supposedly have magic, that supposedly have spiritual power. Dalhin nyo ang inyong mga panyo. If one of us, one of the preachers here in our church will start saying, bring your handkerchiefs here at babasbasan natin yung mga yan para panglaban nyo sa mga masasamang espiritu. Do not believe that pre- preacher. Okay? We do not believe in man-made charms as a replacement. These are all counterfeit authority over evil spirits, over evil. Even this very pulpit, yung iba, sinasamba nila yung pulpit to eh. May mga kristyano na naniniwala na may special something sa isang pulpito na kinakailangan mo siyang protektahan, na kinakailangan mong igalang to the point na sinasamba na nila, yung pulpito mismo. But this is just food. And many of us, because of our sinful nature, are very superstitious when it comes to many things. At kaya yung mga supposedly bagay daw na ginamit ng mga apostles, na ginamit ng mga saints, na pinagtabuna ng mukha daw ni Jesus Christ, ay sinasamba sa iba't ibang lugar. But these are no substitute for the person of Christ, for who Christ is. What else are being counterfeit, are being worshipped nowadays, are being used to combat evil? Yung mga magic spells, yung mga dasal, yung mga incantations, to the point that even spiritual terms are being used as magic spells. Yung word na in the name of Jesus, there is nothing wrong with that because we have access to God in the name of Jesus Christ. That is why we say in the name of Jesus Christ after we pray. But it seems that there are many people nowadays who use the word in the name of Jesus as a magic spell. Na tuwing natatakot sila, okay, nagre-rely sila dun sa term na yon and not exactly on Jesus Christ Himself. In the name of Jesus, naging tila ba pag sinabi ko sa'yo yon ay gagaling ka sa iyong sakit. You will see that even right now, social media has made us uh, able to access many services kung saan yung pastor, naka-jacket siya, okay, pastor or ministro kung ano man ang tawag, papipilahin yung mga may sakit, supposedly may sakit, and sisigaw lang siya, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, and all the other religious terms that you can think about, and suddenly that person will be healed of his sickness and his diseases. Only to turn out that many of these people are fake. Marami ang lumalabas at naglalantad na sa panahon ngayon dahil hindi maatim ng kanilang konsensya na niloloko nila ang mga tao na marami mga tao ang nag, nagwawaldas ng kanilang pera dahil umaasa sila na yung sasabihin ng ministro na religious terms ang makapagpapagaling sa kanila at makapagpapakas out sa kanilang evil spirits. But in actuality, they are substituting those very words to the authority of Christ. They are using them as mere incantations. Didn't the sons of Sceva cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ? Ginamit din naman nila yung pangalan ni Jesus Christ. But they were never authorized and they were not of Christ. We must not use the name of Jesus Christ or any other religious terms as sort of a magic spell because this does not substitute for the authority that is in the person of Jesus Christ. What else do people believe? There are many pretenders and false teachers. As I have said earlier, People are being deceived even at this very age of information. Kahit accessible na information na marami sa mga taong to ay nanluloko lang, na hindi naman talaga sila nagpapagaling, ay marami pa rin na patuloy na naluloko. Minuto ng Himala. Sa isang minutong to, magagaling kayo sa lahat ng mga sakit nyo. Ipadala nyo lang ang inyong mga panyo, babasbasan at magagaling kayo. Ipahid nyo lang ang inyong panyo. Dito sa ribultong to, or ipahid nyo lang ang, ang inyong panyo dito sa taong to at ang kanyang pawis sa mga pagpapagaling sa inyo. Dito na to exactly the specifics dahil hindi naman natin sila kasama and we do not want to judge them for their, their faith. But obviously, there are many people 
in this world today. And you can ask the missionaries that are on the field right now, how many people are being deceived? How many people are under the bondage of evildoers who are messing even with witchcraft? Marami ang naluloko, madami ang mga peke sa panahon ngayon who are not of Christ. And the sad thing is, many of these people are using the name Christian, using the name of Jesus Christ to attract people. But they are not of Christ and they are not of His church. Many people are still misled. And that is why we believers have to be careful. We really have to be careful. We have to make sure that the things that we adapt, the teachings that we adapt in any place, must conform to what the Scriptures say. And that is why it is important for us to study the Scripture. Hindi porkit maganda yung narinig natin na saying or paniniwala or teaching ay katanggap-tanggap na. Hindi porkit may pangalan ni Jesus Christ na ginamit doon ay katanggap-tanggap na. We have to compare everything to the authority of the Word of God so that we will not be misled. And if you are right now still under the bandage of misinformation, you must understand that Christ has come here into the world not to be as a martyr or not to serve as a mere inspiration for your life. Jesus Christ came here into the world to die as a sinner, paying for the sins of sinners. He was treated as a sinner there on the cross by a holy God. He was punished for the sins of sinners. And this is what many people would not like to accept. That the sins that Jesus Christ is paying for on that cross is not His, but the sins of us. And it is for this reason that we stand no longer in condemnation before a holy God. That's why we turn to Romans 5.1 which tells us, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We could not attain salvation for our, on our own. Hindi natin kayang iligtas ang ating sarili. It is only through Jesus Christ. And this is the message that is being distorted. This is the message that is being subtracted, added, kung ano pa dinadagdag nila. But we have to understand that the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ died on the cross as a substitute for sinners. And we who are sinners have to have faith on Jesus Christ. Those who are in Christ will be forgiven. Romans 5.8 tells us, But God commended His love toward us in that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. If you have not yet professed your faith in Jesus Christ, I encourage you to do so. Trust in Jesus Christ, the saving Lord, as your only hope of salvation. You have sinned against God. And the sins that you have done have been paid for by Jesus Christ. To be sure of that, you have to have faith on Him. That is how you get born again. Application number two, last. Amidst an ungodly and confusing, confusing world, we must continually fix our eyes on Christ alone. The world is very confusing right now because there are many voices around us. There are many voices that uh, that shout on our ears, teaching us wrong doctrines, teaching us confusing doctrines. In a world that is corrupted by sin, genuine Christianity will always be counterculture. Ito mga ginagawa natin, many people will not understand us. The ways of Christianity will never be understood by the world. Some of your neighbors and your family members might have asked you, bakit, bakit di ka sumasama sa amin paglinggo? Because for the Christian, Sunday is the Lord's day. And on that day, the Lord must be exalted. Bakit puro gospel ka na lang? Bakit ba pala importante sa'yo yung church? Bakit ba importante sa'yo yung ministries? The world will not understand us. All the things that we do are in conformity to what the Scripture tells us and the world will not understand us. The world will teach different things. The world will teach different ideas. But because of the changing power of the gospel of Christ that has changed us, our actions, our mindset would change. And the things that we do as Christians would eventually counter the sinful culture that is around us. Great is Diana of the Ephesians! The Ephesians shouted. 
They do not want to bow down to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. They wanted to follow their own belief. They wanted to follow their own mindset. They want to worship their own wealth. What will happen to people if they reject the Lordship of Jesus Christ? What will happen if people started following their own ideas that are contrary to what the Scripture tells us? There would be confusion. Today, it's very confusing right now. The situation in the world today is very confusing right now that you do not even know the difference between a male and a female. You do not know the difference between true love and fake love. The TV, the internet, and even the educational books that we are reading are all teaching us different things that are contrary to what the Word of God teaches us. Bubukas ka lang ng Facebook, marami, maling katuruan. Manonood ka ng TV, bubuksan mo. Nagpapatawa yung kung sino-sino mang comedians dyan. Nagtuturo ng maling katuruan. O, oh, ikaw, nagagandahan ka sa kanilang pagkakasabi. Magaling magsalita eh. Oh, it must be true. No, compare all the things that you hear with what the Bible tells us. When the voices around us are teaching us numerous things that are against Scripture, how do we keep our focus? We focus on our Lord. We focus on the one who has saved us. Hebrews 12, 2 tells us, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Always look back to the message of the gospel. Always look back to what Jesus Christ has done for you. Always look back to who Jesus is to you. He is your saving Lord. Kaya nga, ang ganda ng kanta ng Be Thou My Vision, di ba? Kung makikita nyo yung lyrics ng kantang yun, talagang kinakailangan natin mag-focus kay Jesus Christ sa ating buhay dito sa mundo at magpakailanman dahil Siya ang ating Panginoon at tagapagligtas. What is our guide whenever there are numerous philosophies that appear to be true? What do we do? We compare everything to what the Scriptures tells us. Kaya balikan natin yung sina, binasa natin last time, no? Sa 2 Timothy 3.16, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable or useful for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Fellow members of Baptist Bible Church, let us continue to focus on Christ, our Savior. Iba-iba yung ating pamilya, iba-iba yung ating pinanggalingan, but we only have one Savior. We only have one saving Lord. Let us together keep our focus on Him. And that is why it is important what we do every Sunday and every time we gather as a church because we, as children of God, together worship Him and look to Him and praise Him for who He is to us. Let us continue encouraging the church. Let us continue participating in the ministries of the church that advance the gospel. Next week, we will study Acts chapter 20 kung saan marami tayong matututunan at isa sa mga matututunan natin ay isang, isang member ng uh, church na nakatulog. At after niya makatulog, ano kaya nangyari sa kanya? Okay, so kung laki kayo sa Sunday school, alam nyo yan, si Yutikus, di ba? Okay, next week na natin siya pag-aaralan and many other things. Next week, we will also study the Apostle Paul's uh, parting words to the Ephesian leaders before he gets to Rome and before he eventually dies there. So, medyo uh, pagka uh, dramatic no, yung uh, life ni Apostle Paul. So, continue joining our Sunday school. Thank you for supporting us, those who are watching with us uh, online. And those who are here, we thank you for continually supporting our Sunday school. May I request everyone to please stand. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the truths that we have learned from your word. And we thank you, Lord, for these narratives that we see in scripture. We thank you, Lord, for these people who are you, whom you are using to show an example for us, to help remind us about our saving Lord, who is none other than Jesus Christ. We ask, Lord, that you continually motivate us, especially when we are discouraged, whenever we are ending up relying on other things apart from your Son, Jesus Christ. 
We ask, Lord, that you continually guide us and you continue to steer us away from all the wrong philosophies and all the wrong beliefs that are around us in this culture today. We know, Lord, that nothing can thwart your church, Lord. Not, not even the gates of hell will not be able to stand against it. So we ask, Lord, that you continue to encourage us, you continue to motivate us. Help us, Lord, always to keep our eyes on the cross, on what your, Jesus Christ, your Son, Jesus Christ, has done for us. If there is anyone who has not yet professed faith on Jesus Christ, we ask, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to convict the heart of that person so that he would be able to profess faith on Jesus Christ. All these things, I pray, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Our service starts at 10 o'clock.